I have never had so many people email me about any other story. A contentious proposal is stirring up significant debate in Florida. The state has recently unveiled plans for major changes to nine state parks, including golf courses, large lodges, and more. And residents have been given just a week to respond. I'm Jason Epperson, and this is RV Miles. This video is a bit out of our regular scheduled programming, but it's time sensitive, so I wanted to get it out there. There's a big to-do going on in Florida right now over some really impactful changes to state parks, and the state has only given residents a week's notice for public meetings to respond. Long story short, the state released plans to expand infrastructure at nine state parks. Most of them small changes, but some massive developments are proposed that environmental activists say will disrupt fragile ecosystems and reduce the already limited protected lands available in some of these sensitive areas. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection released on August 19th, it's 2024 to 25, Great Outdoors Initiative to Increase Public Access, Recreation, and Lodging at Florida State Parks. A press release says the initiative will, quote, work to expand public access, increase outdoor activities, and provide new lodging options across Florida State Parks, reinforcing the state's dedication to conservation, the outdoor recreation economy, and a high quality of life for Floridians. In fiscal year 2022-23, to 23, Florida's 175 state parks attracted nearly 30 million visitors, contributing to an annual economic impact of $3.6 billion and supporting more than 50,000 jobs. Florida's broader outdoor recreation economy generated over $52 billion in economic output and supported more than 460,000 jobs in 2022, according to the release. Quote, under the leadership of Governor Ron DeSantis, Florida has significantly increased its investment in conserving its natural landscapes, acquiring over 260,000 acres, the majority of which are located within the Florida Wildlife Corridor. This cumulative investment represents nearly 20% of the total acres of lands currently part of the Florida State Park System. In addition to increasing the number of campsites, cabins, and lodges on park property, the initiative will increase the number of outdoor recreation opportunities available at Florida State Parks, including pickleball, disc golf, golf, and paddling. So that's sort of the PR spin version of the story, but the release followed leaked plans for some of these parks, plans that have yet to involve any public input and that some park managers know nothing about. Eight simultaneous in-person one-hour meetings are scheduled across the state to present the plans this coming Tuesday, August 27th. So what are those plans? I'll get to them in a second. But first, this video is sponsored by our friends at RVmattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. If you want a real mattress from your RV to replace the piece of crap that the manufacturer put in, you can grab one from RVmattress.com. They have all sorts of different thicknesses and sizes that fit all those different odd openings for mattresses that RVs come with today. Their mattresses come to you shipped in the mail from their factory in Arizona. They're vacuum sealed. You just open them up on the mattress platform in your RV and you're off to the races. They have a 120 night sleep trial. Their mattresses are toxin free. And if you use the code RVMILES at RVMattress.com slash RVMILES, you get 25% off. So that's 25% off with code RVMILES at RVMattress.com slash RVMILES. Thanks so much to Brooklyn Bedding for supporting this show. It really means a lot to us. Okay, so the proposals. The largest involves not one, not two, but three golf courses, two 18 holes and one nine hole, covering 1,050 acres at Jonathan Dickinson State Park. The golf courses would necessitate the removal of the Hobe Mountain Observation Tower, an existing park entrance, staff residences, and more. Jonathan Dickinson State Park is on the Atlantic coast north of the Palm Beach area. Anastasia State Park on the Atlantic coast in St. Augustine and Topsail Hill Preserve State Park on the Gulf Coast near Destin would each get lodges with a 350 room capacity, along with up to four pickleball courts and a disc golf course. Grayson Beach State Park on the Gulf Coast near Panama City Beach would get 10 cabins, a beach access restroom, 
and up to four pickleball courts and a disc golf course. There's a theme here. Hillsborough River State Park inland northeast of Tampa would get up to four pickleball courts and a disc golf course. Honeymoon Island State Park near Clearwater would get up to four pickleball courts. Olita River State Park north of Miami would get up to 10 cabins or glamping space up to four pickleball courts and a disc golf course. And Dr. Von D. Mizzle Eula Johnson State Park in the same area would also get up to four pickleball courts. Camp Helen State Park back up along the Panhandle Gulf Coast would get up to 10 cabins or a glamping area. So when you look at it as a whole, it's a lot of stuff, but certainly most of this can be done in unobtrusive ways. Much of this is stuff lots of state parks have. Four pickleball courts is a pretty small space, about the average size plot of land as a home. And theoretically, it'd be placed in areas where there's already development, maybe replacing old basketball courts, other outdated, unused structures. Disc golf courses can be relatively unobtrusive, though they aren't always. They can be very similar to a trail in many ways. But 10 cabins and glamping tents start to get into that takes a lot of land territory. And clearly the big proposals that are drawing the most attention are the three golf courses at Dickinson State Park and the two 350 room lodges at Anastasia and Topsail. 350 rooms is a lot for a lodge. Most of your bigger national park lodges have significantly fewer rooms. Many Glacier Hotel has 215. The Awani in Yosemite has 97 rooms. Your average modern budget hotel like a Fairfield Inn has under 100 rooms. There's a seven story Holiday Inn right out my window of the studio here that has 172 guest rooms. So 350, it's a darn big lodge, not quite big city high rise hotel, but approaching that. The nonprofit Florida Wildlife Federation has led much of the short but rapidly growing fight against the proposals, saying they would, quote, forever alter the natural landscape and passive recreational enjoyment of our treasured public lands. A statement went on to say that these proposed changes are in direct conflict with state law guiding the Division of Recreation and Parks, specifically the policy to promote such character as to emblemize the state's natural values and enjoy these values without depleting them. The negative reaction doesn't stop there, though. Audubon, Florida, and Friends of the Everglades have called for supporters to write their officials to object. Protests have begun at Jonathan Dickinson State Park, and the public has been flooding negative feedback to elected officials' emails and phone lines. According to an ABC affiliate, city manager David Burcham said the city of St. Augustine was not made aware of the state's bold new plan for Anastasia State Park, one of the parks that would get a 350-room lodge. The city said it needs to review the project to see if it's compliant with the city's comprehensive plan and code ordinances, which the project may fall under since the park is within city limits. U.S. Representative Brian Mast, Republican from Palm City, said the park proposals came without any forewarning, quote, nobody that I spoke to in government had heard literally one thing about this. Everyone was taken by surprise. And that's the real crux of the problem here. Lots of public lands have golf courses, lodges, and pickleball courts, but opponents say this plan was developed in secret, which is against state law and is being rushed through. On Thursday, August 15th, a draft unit management plan amendment for Jonathan Dickinson State Park was leaked and distributed widely, laying out the golf courses and other changes. That's the first time anybody really heard of this plan. And then on Monday, August 19th, a leaked memo indicated that Jonathan Dickinson State Park changes were not isolated. That leaked memo says, quote, in early August, the Office of Park Planning was directed by the Executive Office of the Governor to compose nine amendments to existing management plans for nine state parks. The office was directed to drop slash hold other tasks and compose these amendments as quickly as possible. Traditionally, management plans and management plan amendments, I'm still quoting the memo here, require general public meetings and advisory group meetings. To fulfill these requirements, presumably as quickly as possible, eight public meetings across eight counties are going to be scheduled for August 27th, and one advisory group session is going to be held on Thursday, August 29th. The advisory group session will be held via Teams, Microsoft Teams, it's like Zoom, where all nine amendments are to be discussed. 
the Office of Park Planning has been directed to play pre-recorded presentations and receive and record feedback at these meetings without answering questions. Following this public engagement phase, <laughs> the Office of Park Planning will be submitting these documents to the Acquisition and Restoration Council, or ARC, for approval, which would allow the DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, to begin seeking funding and laying the groundwork for construction. The Office of Park Planning is to have these documents submitted to ARC in time for presumed approval in September. That's really quick. Also on Monday the 19th, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection released that press release from the 2024 to 25 Great Outdoors Initiative under the direction of the governor's office that we went over earlier. And on Tuesday the 20th, the meetings were scheduled and the draft plans were released. Of particular concern to many is those eight meetings being held at the same time on the same day all over the state and in person only, which means representatives from organizations, elected officials, and the general public can only attend one of them. They're all only an hour long and apparently no questions are going to be answered. So I don't know how much feedback they're going to actually receive. Eric Draper, who served as the director of Florida State Parks between 2017 and 2021, told the Tampa Bay Times that it appears the state's environmental agency is skirting the legal process and the park system's own internal operations manual for updating park management plans. Quote, this appears to be something that has been planned in secret, and it doesn't appear to have involved the hundreds, if not thousands of people who are volunteers in the parks, the citizen support organizations, or the many people who have been involved in helping create and develop Florida's award-winning park system. He said that before the environmental agency formally introduced its proposed changes, staff should have convened a citizen advisory committee made up of other state agencies and people who are working in state parks. That advisory committee should have met and then held a public hearing. Quote, this seems like a process that is deliberately intended to avoid public participation. Under state law, management plans for parks over 160 acres are required to be developed by an advisory group. In addition to state officials, members should include private property owners, a local conservation group, and local elected officials. Quote, amending a park management plan always starts with a local process, he said, because local staff, volunteers, and conservation groups are better suited to know the park's needs. I've never seen what is being done right now. Park staff at several locations that were contacted by the Tampa Bay Times said they hadn't heard of any proposed changes. The park manager at Honeymoon Island said he hadn't heard anything about pickleball courts and was unaware of any proposal to build them there. This is also not the first time there's been a proposal to build a golf course in Jonathan Dickinson State Park. Back in 2011, lawmakers introduced legislation that would have let golfer Jack Nicholas build golf courses in state parks. Public outcry led lawmakers to withdraw their plans a week after they were introduced. So that's what's going on in Florida. As this story develops, it's clear that the proposed changes in Florida state parks are raising serious concerns about environmental impact and public involvement with crucial meetings scheduled for August 27th. Stakeholders and citizens alike are scrambling to make their voices heard. If you're a Florida resident and are interested in attending one of these meetings, I'll put the info in the description. Stay tuned for further updates. We'll continue to follow this unfolding controversy in our regular RV and camping news roundups. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Subscribe if you want more like it, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.